When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. These acids here might be a bit familiar because these are actually your acids that were in the syllabus dot point. I would um, recommend you know these four different types of acids. We had our hydrochloric acid here, hydrochloric acid, which was a strong acid, our sulfuric acid down here, sulfuric acid. We had our acetic acid up here, acetic acid, and citric acid was this one. Now, you should know the structure, but you should also know the actual equation, because this dot point actually says, gather and process information from secondary sources to write ionic equations to represent the ionization of acids. So even though it doesn't mention those four specifically, but because they've actually appeared in two different syllabus dot points already, I will recommend you just know how to actually write a ionic equation for the ionization of acids, and these four would be good ones to remember. I'll go over them each in this actual video. And remember, the important parts you should know is you should write your states of matter. So is it liquid, is it gas, is it whatever it is. States of matter, you should obviously have your equilibrium arrow, or your, if it's going to completion, that's what you do for completion. Or if it's equilibrium, that would be for equilibrium. So two acids in this one will have equilibrium, and two acids will be going to completion. And then you should also make sure that you, that you write that um, you d differentiate between monoprotic and diprotic and triprotic. I'll, I'll go over those ones in a second. But these are more or less important points. And then obviously, you make sure you've got the ionization correct in terms of how the actual procedure, how the reaction goes ahead. I'll cover all that now. So for the first one, we'll go do acetic acid first. The actual um, chemical formula for acetic acid was C2. H3, and then we had, so it was C, H3, C, O, O, H, and in its normal form that was already aqueous, so its state is actually aqueous. And when that reacted with water, so with H2O, what happened was it became it lost its actual hydrogen here. So the actual chemical reaction in this case, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't go to completion. So we write the equilibrium arrow, so that's important, at the states of, of states of matter, so aqueous and liquid for the reactants. And then what happens is we have this whole thing here. I'll just copy paste it, this whole thing. And the only thing you got to remove is we have lost one of the hydrogens, so it's that hydrogen is not there anymore. Instead, it's a negative ion, so it's a minus. And then we add to that, we had the H3. Now, because the actual hydrogen went from acetate onto the actual water molecule, so now it's H3O, and that was a plus. And this is liquid. So this would have been your equation. Right, so again, the most important parts were to write it in the correct sequence, to have the states matter, and to have the correct reaction arrow. In this case, it doesn't go to completion, so it's your equilibrium arrow. And for the second one, we're going to cover citric acid. Again, you should remember the actual formula for citric acid. That was CH5O. And then we had a bracket opening, and we had... C O O H O O H and we had three of those. So brackets closed, three of those, now it's aqueous. Remember that C O O H three, that just means I had three of these groups, which the actual citric acid has, one of these, two of these, three of these. And this is why this one is called a triprotric acid, so it's a tripotric acid. And the reason why, protric acid, the reason why is because you can have you can give away three protons as opposed to acetic acid which could only give away one. So acetic acid is a monoprotric acid. 
So we have this, then we have our water reacting like we did in the last one. So we add plus H2O. Again, we also have the same equilibrium arrow because this is a weak acid, it doesn't go to completion. So for this reaction, we also have equilibrium arrow. And then we have, in this case, we have three possible ones that we can give away. I'm just going to copy and paste this whole thing. But some modifications for the actual reactants because what happens is now we only have two left because one of them actually had lost its hydrogen. So two have left and one that has lost we write it as C O O minus. And initially we had C O O H three times. Now we have only two of those left and one of them has no more hydrogen. And this is aqueous, still aqueous. And we obviously also have our H three O plus last one. And so when it comes to this equation, the main part is to realize that it is a triprotric acid, which means it can lose up to three different hydrogens. And if you write this, what that means is it just has lost this first one. You could do that over and over again, you could do that three times, but this actual equation means we've lost only one of the actual protons or one of the hydrogens from its actual structure. And these were both the weak acids and that's why it goes to equilibrium. Now for hydrochloric acid, this is a more straightforward one. So HCl is our initial hydrogen chloride and that is gas. This is gas form. We, before we put it into water, it's gas. And then we also have our H2O, which is obviously liquid. Now what kind of error do we use for this one? Well, it goes to completion. So we actually use just the completion arrow, not the equilibrium arrow. And then we have left over, we have a Cl minus because the hydrogen has left hydrogen chloride and we have a hydrogen chloride ion. And then we have our H3 plus ion because they grab that extra hydrogen. And so this would be the equation and these are obviously both aqueous now. They're both, this one's aqueous. So it went from gas to aqueous. This arrow it means that it goes to completion because it's a strong acid. And that's why you should, and this is a monoprotic acid because it only can lose one hydrogen, only has one hydrogen to lose. Now, the next one was sulfuric acid. The chemical formula for sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So it's S sulfa SO4. And this is usually a liquid. So the state of matter is a liquid. And we add to that, we add the water, so H2O. I'm just going to copy and paste that from here. And what kind of arrow is it? Well, if we're talking about the first, because this is a diprotric acid, it can lose up to two hydrogens. But right now we're only talking about the first hydrogen. And for the first hydrogen, it goes to completion. For a second hydrogen, actually, it doesn't always have to go for, to completion. But when we're talking about the first hydrogen, which we're talking about in this case, it will go to completion, so we have a completion arrow. And then what will be the result? Well, we'll have this here, but it, it won't be H2, it will be H only, because it lost one of the actual hydrogens. So I'll remove one of the hydrogens because it lost it. And that's why it's overall it's negative. Negative. And then we have plus H2, S, uh, plus our usual hydronium ion. So this is our hydronium ion. And then we have our proton donor and proton acceptor. Right? So these were the four equations I probably would recommend you know just because they're kind of come, they've appeared quite a few times in the syllabus dot points. And this actual syllabus dot point says, gather and process information from secondary sources to write ionic equations to rep represent the ionization of acids. So remember what happens with acetic acetate is acetate when it comes in contact with water. Remember that you would use the equilibrium arrow and that you have them dissociating and forming its ions. Same thing with our citric acid. When we have this kind of equation, that means we're talking about the first hydrogen that leaves. This can happen three more times, two more times to lose all their hydrogens because it's a triprotric. But yeah, first it's aqueous and then it'll still be aqueous at the end as well. Then our hydrogen chloride will combine with water and then all of this reaction goes to completion. So all of it dissociates into the chloride ions and the hydronium ions. And then for sulfuric acid, we have for the first hydrogen, that also goes to completion. Then we lose one hydrogen to our 
water molecules from the hydronium ion. And for the last one, it's just this is a negative ion because it's lost a proton and overall has more protons than electrons. And more electrons than protons, which is why it's negative. But yeah, I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.